Hey everyone, welcome to another practice vlog. Today's Wednesday, so I just had another lesson yesterday, and I'll tell you what I learned in my lesson and kind of some decisions that I've made while I'm practicing later so that you can kind of see things in context. It'll make more sense that way. So today I'm actually going to be playing in studio class. If you're new to music and you don't know what studio class is, it's where the whole studio, so for me it's the viola studio, comes together with our teacher and we play for each other, give each other um, critiques and ways to improve, and it's a nice place to practice performing before we actually like go out on stage and get really nervous. So it's a nice place to just practice all of that and to get some other ideas. So I will be kind of performing the first movement of Breaker for the first time tonight. So I thought I would take you guys along with me so that you could see how that goes. And I'll let you know what kind of comments I get and the ways that I can improve. This vlog does correspond to the blog post, which I'll link down below. I would love it if you check it out and read what I have to say. I'm just playing the first movement, just so everyone knows. <laughs> So I just finished up with the studio. I thought my first performance went really well. I, I was happy with it. So I got some comments saying to like take some more time, especially around the double stops, and to really play around with the different sections. So there's like an A section, a B section, and then the A section comes back again. So I want to kind of compare and contrast the A and B sections. See, kind of, kind of just try it like a few different ways. 
see if I can play up the differences and see if I can find some more similarities between them that I can kind of tie the two together or possibly make them sound very like completely different. So I think that's kind of two different ideas to play around with and just experiment with. It's now the night before my next lesson. I know it's been a while since I last updated you, but I was really happy with my first studio performance. I can't remember if I vlogged after that. I think I might have. <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Either way, I thought it was a really good first performance. It was pretty solid and I was able to incorporate some things that my teacher and I had talked about in my lesson earlier, or the day before I played in the studio. So here are some things that we talked about in last week's lesson that I've been incorporating. And I haven't done too much work on the Rager in the last week, I've just had other priorities, but um, I've just kind of been touching on what we talked about. So in the second bar of the third line, there are some accidentals, the C sharp, the A sharp, and the D sharp particularly is playing on the other string, so I was going like this. On the A string. And then on the D string. But I'm now doing those on the same strings as the notes before and the notes after, so that there's less of a timbre change, because you can kind of hear the difference between the different strings. So I'll play that the way I'm doing it now. So originally I had done them on the other strings to avoid extending my fourth finger too far, but it looks like I'm going to do that so that um, the overall quality is better. And I may go into second position or something there, I'm not totally solid on the fingering shit. So a comment that I got in studio was about the three different, or two different sections, the A section comes back, so the three sections of the piece. Um, the middle section sounds kind of detached from like the sandwich, the slices of bread basically. Um, so I'm going to play around with making it sound similar and making it sound different and kind of seeing if I like one more than the other, if there are certain elements of both that I like. I'm just gonna see. Um, I haven't really gotten much of a chance to play around with it yet. Another thing that we talked about in my lesson was kind of taking more time at the ends of phrases and in between the sections. So kind of just letting it rest for a second and giving that silence for a little bit. And that's something that I'm still working on because when I do things like that, I feel like it lasts way longer than it actually does. So it's something that I really have to overdo. And the same with the ending, there's a semper retardando at the end and I was kind of just playing through it thinking that I was slowing down, but I have to do a lot more work to actually slow down so that the audience can notice that I'm actually slowing down. <laughs> We also looked at the second movement in my lesson last week. We didn't do any detailed work or anything, we just kind of did an overview of it. And my main takeaway is to find little sections of this and play it kind of, I don't want to say choppy, but like make the sections different. So I'm going to play up the differences in this one a lot and kind of break it down because if you play through this really straight it doesn't make too much sense. So there are like a lot of character changes and articulation changes and well it's staccato most of the way through this but um like it's a lot of rhythmic changes too so it's it's like a bunch of different characters and moods in this. Here's what I've got so far. Thank you. 
heads up too. <laughs> so I haven't worked much on solidifying fingerings or working on intonation, as you probably heard, <laughs> but I have been working on what I want the characters of these little sections to be like and just where these sections are in general. So I've been doing a lot of kind of thinking about it rather than um, breaking it down and practicing slowly, but that's actually what I'm gonna do tonight. So follow along with me as I practice this. So first I'm going to play these first few thirds. Um, it's just the first three bars, but I'm just going to work on going between them and tuning them. One thing that I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm going between them in the same bowing that I will be using when I'm actually playing it because um, our bow helps us shift so you want to shift with the bow and I find that if I practice it with the opposite bowing it doesn't work as well when I play it in context so I have to practice it with the bowing because that's you know part of what we do just came up with a fingering I think I need to narrow this down and focus on one thing to make better at a time. I'm going to do my beloved um, only play one note with a bow but finger both notes. the bottom note by itself is really good for your ear too because half the time I find that I don't even know what the bottom notes are by themselves <laughs> so it really helps train my ear what to listen for when I play both of the notes together. I'm gonna put it together. <laughs> I'm gonna keep repeating that and try to speed it up now. 